Hey everyone, welcome back to Oliver Explaining Engineering. My name is Oliver and I will explain engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about a type of engineering that you may have never heard of before. I know I didn't in my first year, but it's a very cool type of engineering. But before getting into the video, quick reminder from my production crew to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this and to leave a like or dislike. Oh wait, sorry, you can't do that anymore. So just leave me a like and let's get on with the video. Now, I'll stop beating around the bush, and as I'm sure you could guess from the title, this video is going to be about engineering physics. Now, when you hear engineering physics, the first thing you might think of is engineers doing physics. And while this is partially correct, that's not everything that engineering physics is by a long shot. So today I'm going to be explaining what an engineering physics student would do in their undergrad, what kind of jobs are available for an engineering physicist, and I'll be talking about graduate school and other opportunities available for engineering physicists. So let's start with some definitions of engineering physics from Google, and the first one is engineering physics or engineering science. Well there you go, I actually didn't know that was another name for it, but now I do. It refers to the study of combined disciplines of physics, mathematics, chemistry, biology, and engineering, particularly computer, nuclear, electrical, electronics, aerospace, materials, or mechanical engineering. Basically, that definition should have cleared everything up for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Drop a like, subscribe, just <laughs> kidding. Wow. Um, that definition sucked. So let's go to a different definition that actually makes some sense. So at the risk of being too good of a brand ambassador for my university, according to the McMaster University website, if you choose to do engineering physics, you can further specialize in subfields such as nuclear engineering, energy systems, nano and micro devices, photonics engineering, and biomedical engineering. Within all of these, you have specific topics that you might cover. For example, in nuclear engineering, you cover a lot of energy related topics. Meanwhile, in nano devices, you might focus more on semiconductor circuits, fabrication, etc. Now, if we look at U of T's engineering science program, they state that engineering science is an interdisciplinary field bridging the gap between scientific theory and engineering applications. I think that this does a little bit of a better job explaining what engineering physics is and U of T's engineering science program in particular. I also found this other quote from a McMaster YouTube video explaining engineering physics, which stated that engineering physics lets you participate in any conversation. So after seeing what kinds of topics engineering physics covers and how different universities like to describe it, this is how I think about it. Engineering physics is one of the more theoretical slash scientific fields of engineering, but it differs from a pure science by putting an engineering spin on these topics. From my understanding, engineering physics teaches you to research and discover a lot better than any other field of engineering. Most other fields of engineering do enough math and physics to let you apply those skills to the engineering principles you need, but in engineering science or engineering physics, you are essentially a dual engineer and scientist, and you know how to research a little bit better than the rest of us. In hindsight, I think that this would have been something I really would have enjoyed, so if I could do engineering over again, this would definitely be near the top of the list. Now, I already gave a bit of a sneak peek into the types of courses that you would take in engineering physics, but what are the more core courses that you would take if you did engineering physics? As I previously mentioned, each subfield will have its own kind of topics that you will be covering, but within that, you have some general courses that you have to fulfill as well, some examples of this are electricity and magnetism, computational multiphysics, analog and digital circuits, thermal systems design, computation mechanics, intro to quantum mechanics, and mathematics. And you have more courses if you go to third year, you'd have something along the lines of electronic courses, communication and project management, engineering, metrology, numerical methods, statistical mechanics, signals and systems, and economics. And then when you go on further into fourth year, you basically take all of the electives based on your specialization, as well as a capstone project where you try to make something out of all the knowledge you've gained in the past three years. So if you wanna see this course calendar that I referenced, I'll have it linked down below, but the reason that I'm using it just for some context is one, because I'm used to looking at this website, and two, because I like the way that they lay it out. It's pretty concise, it tells you everything you need to know, and if you want to dig a bit deeper into these topics, feel free to do a quick Google search to get some more information and see if you'll be interested in it. 
Okay, so now that we've covered the types of courses that you'll be taking, what kind of jobs can you get from an engineering physics degree? And the answer is, it varies a lot, actually. You can get a research role, so you know, you could talk to a professor, you could do some research with them, you could then go on to get a master's or a PhD researching a field of engineering physics that you're interested in, you can work at a nuclear reactor, you can work at a company that does semiconductors and printed circuit boards, so this could be companies, you know, your general energy companies, depending depending on the state or province that you're in. And you could do work for companies such as AMD, Intel, Apple, Microsoft, any company that produces their own chips and chip design, you could do that sort of thing as well. There are a lot of various jobs for an engineering physicist. Um, and if you go to the McMaster website, they also have other examples. For example, manufacturing engineer, multidisciplinary design engineer, director of business development, control engineering, systems engineering, business analyst, entrepreneur, project manager, and optical engineer. These job titles really just reinforce what I said earlier about wanting to be in this field because I am somewhat of a business nerd who also is taking an engineering degree. So I think that I would have enjoyed doing pretty much any of these jobs listed on the website. That is, of course, if you end up getting one of those jobs, it's always up in the air. These are just guidelines, no hard rules here whatsoever, but generally speaking, you know, they are, they're a good place to start when looking into engineering fields. Speaking of which, this is why you guys should watch all of the videos I've made about the different types of engineering so that you know what each engineering field can offer before choosing one. This is something that I did not do very well in my first year and that I wish I had done. So if you want to learn about each and every different type of engineering that's out there, check out this link that I'll have linked in the card to a playlist that describes pretty much every kind of engineering you can think of. So back to engineering physics. If you're not interested in working at a nuclear reactor or working on silicon design, what else can you do? Well, as I mentioned, you can do research because there is tons of research done by engineering physicists since they have more of a science-y background. And as I mentioned before, if you don't want to work in a regular job right out of school, what you can do is apply to a master's or a PhD program in engineering physics and do some research. Now, if you do choose to do some kind of research, some topics or areas of study that you might be interested in are things like biomedical, nano and micro devices and production methodologies for silicon, nuclear, energy, photonics, materials and electronics, as well as smart systems. All of these are heavily researched topics, usually by engineering physicists. So, you know, there is lots of interesting areas for you to study if you're interested in research. Now, with all of the types of jobs and different things you can do out of the way, let's get into the part that you all probably want to know about. How much money am I going to make? And that's a great question. Starting out in industry work, you can probably expect to make about $75,000 as a starting salary if you're working for a tech company and maybe about 50 to $60,000 if you are working directly in research. These numbers are also location dependent. So for example, if you work in Silicon Valley or New York, you're easily gonna make $100,000 as your starting salary. But if you work in a province in Ontario, you're probably gonna make about $75,000 out of undergrad. And if you get a master's or a PhD, you can bump that number up by about 10 to $30,000. So obviously do your cost benefit analyses, make sure that it makes sense for you to do those things. As with anything, there is room for upward movement. You could become a project manager, you could become a manager in general, you could become a corporate executive if you really wanted to. Whatever it is, there is obviously room for growth. So in conclusion, engineering physics is a great degree that lends itself super well to learning the science behind the engineering and to working in research and understanding multiple different realms of engineering through all the different courses that you take throughout the degree. Your starting salary is about in line with the average and this obviously varies greatly depending on the job that you have and the location that you're in. But there is such a large variety of opportunities with a degree like this after you graduate that you really won't have to worry about your job being boring. I do think that if you are going into engineering physics, you will probably find something that you're interested in because there are so many interesting topics in my opinion. And that pretty much wraps up my video on engineering physics. Thank you all so much for stopping by to watch it. If you enjoyed the video, again, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one, go check out some other engineering videos. Also, let me know in the comments down below what you thought, if I missed anything, what you wanna see next time, and with that, I'll see you in the next video.